Now let's go back to our illustration. Remember over here, what's on this side of the stage, everyone? Genesis, that's right, Eden. And what's over here, everyone? Revelation. And so here in Eden, Genesis 1 and 2, if we step one chapter this way, we're in Genesis chapter 3, and here we find the first battle between God and Satan on planet Earth. The first battle. Go with me now to Revelation chapter. What chapter would we be in if we stepped one chapter this way from Revelation 21 and 22? Revelation 20. Open your Bible to Revelation chapter 20. Revelation chapter 20. And notice this. Absolutely remarkable. Revelation chapter 20. It says in verse 9, Revelation chapter 20 and verse 9, They went up on the breadth of the earth and surrounded the camp of the saints and the beloved city. Fire came down from God out of heaven, and what did it do? It devoured them. Now look at verse 10. The devil who deceived them was cast into the what, everyone? Lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are, and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Thus ends the history of Satan. Now do you see it? Yes or no? It's so powerful. Over here we have Eden. Over here, we have Eden restored. These are like two bookends on the Bible. But if we come just one chapter this way, we have the first battle between Christ and Satan. And if we come just one chapter this way, we have the what, everyone? Last battle. And so here we have a big picture overview of how to understand the Bible. The Bible is best understood against the backdrop of Eden to Eden and the first conflict and the last conflict. If that makes sense, say amen. amen. Everything in between, everything in between is God trying to get his people back to the Garden of Eden where he can live with them in face-to-face -face communion. Can someone say amen? In fact, that's one of the great promises in Revelation chapter 21, verse 4. It says, and they shall see his face. Powerful living in face-to-face -face communion with God. So we have Eden to Eden. But more than that, there is this battle theme. And all through the Bible, we find this wrestling, not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, to quote Ephesians 6. Now go back to your study guide. Did you get all of those blanks filled in there? Should be pretty easy. Look now with me at the six stages of Revelation's great battle. I'm reading there. Now we will trace six distinct phases of this great battle and the eventual and promised victory of Jesus Christ right through the entire Bible. You will be amazed as you see this unfold right before your eyes. This is no make-believe battle. It is as real as the chair you are sitting on. Write out the six stages and give the Bible references for each one. We'll do our very best here to try and walk you through the six stages. We've already said the Bible is best understood with the backdrop of an Eden to Eden perspective and with a first battle, last battle perspective. I just want to hear a resounding amen if that makes sense. Okay, fantastic. Then let's look at the six stages of the great battle. Number one, the victory is declared. The scripture text we've already looked at, Genesis 3, 15. The victory is declared. That's where God stepped there into the garden and he says, You have won the battle, but you will not win the war. And so here, the first stage of the battle is that the victory is what, everyone? Declared. That's right. Now, the second stage is the victory is begun in the earthly ministry of Jesus. Open your Bibles with me to Luke chapter 11. Luke chapter 11, third book of the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke. Luke chapter 11. There are several passages that could be cited. We'll look at one. Luke chapter 11, beginning in verse 14. Luke chapter 11, beginning in verse 14. What verse, everyone? 14. And he was casting out a demon, and it was mute. So it was, Luke eleven fourteen. 14, when the demon had gone out, that the mute spoke, and the multitudes were amazed. 
But some of them said, he casts out demons by Beelzebub, the ruler of the demons. Others testing him sought from him a sign from heaven. But he, knowing their thoughts, said to them, now listen carefully to the words of Jesus. This is incredible. Verse 17, every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and a house divided against a house falls. Verse 18, if Satan also is divided against himself, how will his kingdom stand? Because you say I cast out demons by Beelzebub. If I cast out demons by Beelzebub, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore they will be your judges. But if I cast out demons with the finger of God, notice this, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. And then he tells a story, a parable, verse 21. When a strong man, fully armed, guards his own palace, his goods are in peace. Verse 22, I love this. But when a stronger than he comes upon him and overcomes him, he takes from him all his armor in which he is trusted and he divides his spoils. Do you follow Jesus' analogy here, yes or no? Very simple. Jesus heals this boy who was demon-possessed. He was mute. He couldn't speak. And Jesus walks up and he casts the demon out. People said, oh, you're doing this in the, in the name of Beelzebub. You're doing it by Beelzebub's power. Jesus says, you're not even thinking. I mean, think it through. If I was casting out demons by Beelzebub, that would mean that the devil is against the devil. And a house divided against itself cannot stand. He says, when a strong man guards his house, his goods are safe. But when a stronger than him comes and overcomes him, then you know that but what Jesus is saying is that the devil is being overcome. The devil is being what? Overcome. And so that's what we see in the earthly ministry of Jesus here. The victory that was promised in Eden is begun. Jesus was healing the blind. Jesus was casting out demons. Jesus was saying to the paralytic, rise, take up your bed and walk. And what I see in my mind's eye here is a picture of Jesus reclaiming. What's the word, everyone? Reclaiming what was rightfully His. Powerful. In fact, we actually looked at this in Luke chapter 13, verses 10 to 6. We don't have to look at the whole chapter, the whole passage, because we've already read it. Remember, Jesus heals that woman there, and the ruler of the synagogue said, What? There are six days on which men ought to work. Come and, come and heal on one of those days and not on the Sabbath. Then remember what Jesus said, You hypocrite! Does not every one of you loose your ox or your donkey on the Sabbath? And then he said, Ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, do you remember those four words? whom Satan has bound. Think of it, he says. Whom Satan has bound these many years be loosed from this burden on the Sabbath day. And so what we find in the earthly ministry of Jesus is that the victory that was promised in Eden, Jesus is reclaiming a brother. Jesus is reclaiming a woman. Jesus is reclaiming a child. He, in John chapter 11, he goes there to Lazarus' tomb. He says, Lazarus, come forth. He was reclaiming even from death. The victory was begun in the earthly ministry of Jesus. If this makes sense, say amen. Okay, 